Hey everybody and welcome to Adobe Desk. My name is Brent and today we're going to be going over this really cool raindrop text effect from a tutorial that I found online. I thought it would be fun to make a video for it. So to get started you're going to need about four assets. The first is going to be this raindrop on brushed metal um, image. The second is going to be a light texture image and the third is a haze texture image. So to get started I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to make it 1500 pixels by 875 pixels. All right, so first I'm going to paint the background layer black. And second, I'm going to create some text. Now, there's one other asset I forgot to mention. That is this, this font that I'm using. It's called Core Humanistic Sans Regular. So um, I'll leave links for all the assets down below so you'll be able to use them. So I'm just going to call this drop. And I'm going to click OK on the text layer. I want to move this around to kind of get it centered on the screen. Uh, no. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, right about there. All right, so for the main for the main portion of this tutorial, the first thing we need to do is transform this text into raindrop shapes. And then the second thing we're going to do is create a lot of different blending effects on the the text so that it, it looks like raindrops. And finally, we're going to add and modify the background so um, it finally brings all the picture together. So first things first. Um, what I want to do is I want to add a filter layer or filter gallery effect. So I'm going to grab the text layer. Make sure that you switch the colors so you have black in the foreground and solid white in the background. Uh, this, this effect that we're going to use doesn't work unless you have that set. It's going to ask me if I want to convert the text to a smart object. Yes, I do. And this is what we're going to use, the stained glass effect here. As you can see, it just kind of parses everything into different chunks. Um, make sure that the cell size is 20, border thickness 5, light sensitivity is 3. Click OK. Good. Now I'm going to grab the magic wand. I'm going to grab, make sure that the contiguous is unchecked. And I'm going to just grab any part of the white there so I get all of the text there. I selected that. I'm going to switch over to my channels and I'm going to create a new channel which is going to be called Alpha 1. I'm going to take the paint bucket white and I'm going to paint that in white. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect the text. Now that I have this I want to do two, two things to it. The first is uh, I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur and I'm going to apply a Gaussian Blur. I'm going to set that to 5.0 pixels. Good. And the second thing I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And this one you're going to have to kind of eyeball. As you can see, you have these different sliders in this here. Uh, you just need to move the, the dark slider down pretty low and the light slider up just a little bit off the wall there. Something, something right around there is probably pretty good. As you can see, the letters uh, kind of form up into raindrop shapes. Yeah, that looks good right there. Great. Now that I have that, I'm going to click RGB channel just to deselect. I'm going to head back to my layers. I'm going to hide the drops text. I'm going to add a new layer, which is blank. And I'm going to go to select load selection. Now, under the channel, change it to alpha 1, which is what we just created on the alpha channel. Click OK, and now that imports that selection that we made over in the Channels tab. So switch colors to white, and I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill that in white. Command D to deselect. So that's the first step there, is to create this, which is just the basic text put in the correct shapes. Let's move on to part two, which is going to be adding the effects to create the raindrop effect or make it look like raindrops. First thing I want to do is I want to change the name of this layer to just drop one. I'll change the fill to zero and I'm going to make a copy of it. And the copy I'm going to rename to oops, 
drop two. You change that fill down to zero as well. Now before we start adding the effects, let's go ahead and grab that background texture so we can see what it is we're doing. So over on this water on metal image, I'm going to go ahead and drag the image with the move tool onto this one. I'm going to put it in place. I'm just going to free transform it to the full size. Hit enter to accept that and then move that layer down. Oops. Move that layer down next to the background. In fact, I'm not going to use the background anymore, but that's going to be the new background. So So on drop 1, I want you to click and bring up the blending options and we're going to add a few different layer styles starting with bevel and emboss so there's a bunch of settings here i'm going to go through them pretty quickly um, if you need to rewind and see them again i suggest you you can do that pretty easily with the video also on the the blog post i create for this at adobe desktop.com uh, will put the uh, the instructions with the exact settings that you'll need so Bevel and emboss, style, inner bevel, technique, smooth, depth, 100%, direction up, size, 7, soften, 0 pixels. All right, so for the shading, the shading is really where everything is done on this. This is where uh, you're going to get the reflective effect, so it starts to look like an actual drop of water. So let's go ahead and set the shading. I'm going to set the angle to 180 degrees. The altitude to 53 degrees. Check anti aliased Highlight mode, vivid light. Opacity at 50% on that. And then the shadow mode set to multiply. And the opacity is going to be set to 15% on that one. Now under bevel and emboss, we're going to click contour to add a contour. And we want to make sure that it has this cone contour. Or you can also do an, an off-center cone if you have that. Anti-aliased, yes, and the range is going to be set to 50%. Next up is a drop shadow. We're going to set that to multiply. Opacity on the drop shadow is going to be set at 5%. The angle is going to be 120. The distance is going to be 3, spread 0, size 5. And the rest of uh, the options under quality you don't need to mess with. Click OK and we're going to be done with that one. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the drop to text layer. But this time we're just going to change the settings a little bit. So under bevel and emboss we're going to change the size from 7 to 16. And we're going to change the shading to 27 degrees instead of 180 degrees and the last thing we're going to do is change the opacity on the multi shadow mode multiply from 15% down to 5% we're going to add a contour again but this time we're going to take the range all the way up to 100% for this cone contour and we're going to add a shadow but instead of a drop shadow we're going to do an inner shadow and this one this one should be pretty well set right here the blend mode is multiply, opacity is going to be 50%, angle 120 degrees, global light checked, distance 0, choke 0, size 13. And that is it. Click OK. So I'm going to group the two text layers there so I can just see what I'm doing. As you can see, the drops look pretty good, but we've got a problem. It's starting to get drowned out a little bit by the background drops. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the spot healing brush and we're going to go to the background layer and we're going to clean up some of these drops that are kind of you can't tell if they're part of the word or not. So I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to make it smaller. Set it down to about 20 pixels. The hardness I'm going to set at 100% and the spacing 25. And I'll tell you why I, I would use a soft brush but something happens when you use a soft brush which is, you'll notice the color of, say, this drop right here at the, uh, the, the curve of the R. If I start affecting or, or brushing around it, a lot of the times with the hard or soft brushes, it ends up going over and it changes the coloring 
it darkens it. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you really can't tell there, but it is really noticeable. So for me anyway, so I don't want any softness because I don't want any overlap. I'm going to use a hard brush and I'm just going to start cleaning up some of these drops that I don't want. And it's not like the drops look bad. It's just that it's kind of hard to distinguish between the letters and the image drops. So I'm just going to start moving around, kind of getting rid of some of them around the edges and in the filling. There we go. Yeah, it's starting to pop out a little bit more. I'll leave that guy there. Now you can leave some if you prefer on yours, or you can take more off if you if you want fewer. That's fine too. I'm just taking out enough that these letters, especially around the P where there's a lot of little drops, I'd rather see my, my text than I would a bunch of, uh, bunch of additional drops. So I'm just gonna take out a bunch. And I'm getting pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. I could, I could go on for sure, but I'm not, I'm gonna leave it alone. So now that we can see our, our text, now we're going to start incorporating some of these other textures. I'm going to start with the haze texture. I'm just going to grab it with the move tool over here, put it in place, align it with the canvas, and resize it to be the full size. Hit enter. Now I'm going to move it on top of all the other layers. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to change the blend mode to soft light. And then I'm going to change the opacity. As you can see, if I turn it down, that was what the image looked like. All right. So I'm going to change the opacity to about 30%. Now it looks like I accidentally put it inside my group. Take it out of the group. Make sure it's on top layer. Good. I don't want my layer to be opacity of 30. I want this top layer to be changed to soft light. You know what I just realized? Yeah, I changed the blending mode of the wrong thing. So I'm gonna have to hit undo a few times because I screwed it up. There we go. Okay, let's try that one more time. Grab this layer, move it to the top. There we go, change it to soft light. Change the opacity, as you can see, that's what we were working with. That's with the full overlay or the full soft light uh, texture. I'm going to put it at about 30 just to give a just to give it a little something, just a little haze. I'm going to do the exact same thing. In fact, with the lights texture, I'm just going to grab that, pull it on here, resize it to the full canvas height and width. Make sure it's still on top. Go to soft light. Turn that opacity down to yeah, 30 looks good on that as well. So I'm going to do just one more thing and then I'm going to call it a day. And that is I'm going to add, if you go down here, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. And I'm going to put it right on top of everything else. When this panel comes up or this, this drop down menu, I'm going to grab a gradient map. Cool. So click dither right away. Um, you can, uh, you won't be able to see it, but it'll it'll make an, a, an improvement. But now we need to change this gradient because obviously this is turning into something completely different. So grab that and open up. I'm just going to go with this this blue one, and I'm going to change the color of that actually because I I don't want to blue that dark. I want to bring it lighten it up a little bit. Something around there. Blue to white. Yes, that's perfect. Actually, I'm going to move that center piece over just a little bit like that. Bring a little bit, little bit more blue, a little bit less white. 
Now you may be saying, okay, that's, that's a bit much, and you're right. That's why we're gonna change the opacity on that, take it down to about 20%. As you can see, that, that just gives it, changes it from kind of a, a grayish to a bluish, which I think kind of just helps when, uh, helps it make it look a little bit more like rain. Well, anyways, I'm going to call it a day there. That's it. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click subscribe on my YouTube channel. Or, and if you would like to see written instructions, come on over to adobedesk.com. I'll leave links to everything down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.